<laughs> okay. All here. All right. So we can start. You can. Okay. I want to call the meeting to order. And uh, we got to do budget allegiance and flag, I think. <laughs> I think the second thing on here is public input. Any public input? No, no, no. no. I'm here to just okay. find out about things that's kosher. <laughs> well, I hope so. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have correspondence. Did we have something here on? Um, on um, private meetings or something. Like, I think we did that last. We did that. Did you do that last time? Yeah. So I don't think there's any correspondence. Then. Um, consideration of meeting notes. I have the meeting notes uh, in front of me here. Uh, then everyone had a chance to review the the notes from July nineteenth, two thousand twenty three. Um, if there are no changes, do I have a motion to accept the meeting of the notes that's presented? Meeting. I'll make a motion. Uh, do I have a second? You have to second. I, Paul I, can't. Paul can't. Okay. Yeah. I second it. So um, a motion has been um, uh, put forward and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And, a minute to approve that. And uh, one abstention. And one abstention. Okay. So now we're going to go into fiscal year 2022-23 pension valuations. And the actuarial report. So let's uh, start out with that. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Scott Lindbergh. I'm here from Milliman, and we do the valuations for the town's two pension plans. So I have the 2023 valuation results here today, uh, which includes the contribution for the 2024 uh, 25 fiscal yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the police plan. Uh, there's two packets that you have, one for each plan. Right. So if you could get the police packet out in front of you. Um, the first page just has some information about our company, which you could look through later if you like. I'm going to skip ahead to the next page. Uh, this page goes over the demographic information for the plan. A uh, chart in the top left uh, shows how the counts for each member group changed over time for the last five years. The dark blue at the bottom show the active members, which are the current police officers that are still earning service towards their pension. Um, it's an open plan. So you see that number growing over time as the police department grows. Uh, you had five new hires this year, which was offset by a couple of retirements. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you see the members and pay status going up as well. That just means the retirees that are currently receiving their pension benefits each month uh, so that went up a little bit, and that in turn was offset by a couple of retiring deaths. Um, the number of terminated members stayed the same at two, and the terminated members are just people who left the plan or do a benefit and uh, are not currently receiving that benefit. Uh, if you look to the right, you can actually see the two terminated members are just people who aren't even vested for a benefit. They just need to receive a refund of their member contribution. Mm. Um, on the bottom, there's a distribution of the current employees um, by their age and their service. And so the main takeaway in this chart is just that uh, in the bottom right there, you have about 10 to 15 police officers who are either eligible to retire currently or very close to being eligible to retire. And so just for planning purposes, you can expect um, probably about a quarter of the, the force could retire in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest of the uh, police officers are in the top left there for the most part, which are just younger officers with less service. So they, you can expect them to be in the plan for a bit. Moving on to the next page. This page goes over the asset performance for the plan. And uh, there's good news this year. We have a strong return of 9.61%. Um, our expected return is at 6.5% right now. And so that's better than expected and um, also much better than last year. Uh, if you look at the bottom chart in the light green bars on the left, that shows the market value of assets over time. So you can see from 2022 to 23, there is a $2.2 million increase in the market assets. Um, 
the dark green bars on the right show the actuarial value of assets, and that also increased. Um, but the actual value of assets is a smooth uh, value that recognizes gains and losses over a five-year period to reduce volatility. And so you can see the increase is slightly less than the increase you see in the market value. And that's just because we're still recognizing the losses from last year and three years ago um, when we valued that amount. Uh, so it, what it does is it reduces volatility year to year. You can kind of see side by side how the actual value of assets increases at a pretty regular rate while the market value jumps up and down. And what that does is it also reduces volatility in the um, the contribution at the end of the um, at the end of the day. Any questions at that point? Okay, we'll move on to the next page. Uh, this is information on how we arrive at our interest rate assumption for the valuation. And it's one of the most impactful assumptions that we make for the valuation. And uh, the interest rates based off the expected returns um, of the plan's assets. And the expected return is based off of the allocation of the assets. So that's what the top chart shows there is uh, the different asset classes that make up the portfolio. Yeah. And the size of each bubble is uh, yeah. correlated with how much the portfolio of that asset class makes up. Yeah. The higher each bubble is means it's expected to make a higher return. And the further to the right, the higher the risk. And so when you combine all of those, you end up at the black dot in the middle that's labeled the entire portfolio. And that is just where our expected return and risk for the portfolio mm -hmm. are this year based on um, our 2023 capital market assumptions. Yeah, just a couple of comments on that. So, um, you know, Morgan Stanley, we have our secular and strategic outlook. So secular is the seven, I'm sorry, 20 year outlook. Strategic is the seven year outlook. Um, I also look at Vanguard's expected rate of returns. This is million, Milliman's expected rate of returns, but, but this is important. And this is why typically defined benefit plans and these types of plans over long periods of time outperform is if we, if we have an expected rate of return of 6.6, of .6, but, and everyone gets that part, right? So, that you know, over long periods of time, right? Over rolling 20 year periods of time, uh, all asset classes go up, right? But we can measure the volatility of the standard deviation. So uh, if, if the standard deviation is 12 and the, and the expected rate of return is 6.6, .6, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at what, what does that mean? That means that on any given random day, 66% of the time, you're up 18.6. And we've been there. We, we, we've been up 18.6 in random periods of time. And then 66% of the time, you're negative six, right? Total return. And that doesn't really feel that bad, right? Like, okay, that, that, that seems tolerable. Well, it's when you go from up 18.6 to negative six, right? Mm -hmm. That's the blown out left tail. That's the 2008, um, you know, that's the, I'd say maybe in the heart of 2022 where you have the bond ag down 12, but you know, the reason why th these, these types of institutional plans with board members is that, you know, unlike, you know, the, the average investor when they're down six will be tempted to sell. The average investor when they're up 18.6 is tempted to buy. Um, and that, you know, if, if we keep this really, these types of plans are really focused on the long haul. And when we use the Morgan Stanley, we don't use the seven year strategic expected rate of returns. We use the 20 year secular and there's no big difference between Milliman's view, Morgan Stanley's view and Vanguard's view. They're just, you're talking basis points, but you know, when we go through tough times like 2022, when we went through 20 tough times like 2008, right? You can you can see that if we remind ourselves on the long view uh, that that you know it, it's a very high probability or uh, that we will land on the expected rate of return. Mm -hmm. so. Great. And to add on that, the bottom chart shows the different ranges of expected returns you can expect over different periods of time. 
So you can see over five years, there's still a significant amount of volatility in our expectations. But as the time horizon gets longer, the range of outcomes narrows and gets closer to approximating the rate of return uh, that we expect, which is that 6.6% .6 in the middle. Um, and since the pension plan has a very long lifetime, we use that long horizon. And uh, we base our interest rate assumption off of the 6.6% .6 that you see there. So in 2022, we had the interest rate at 6.5%. And uh, that's very close to what we see and still expect now. And uh, we recommend keeping it at that 6.5%. It's slightly mm -hmm. conservative, and it's pretty much on the mark. Moving to the next page. This page has information on the funded status of the plan. The accrued liability on the top left is simply the value today of benefits that have already been earned by members of the plan uh, that we paid out in the future. And so you can see over time, the accrued liability has been increasing, which is what you expect to see with an open plan like this one. And there's a little bit of a jump in 2023. That <laughs> is primarily due to um, the plan change that was valued this year. So the police plan had a plan change where it went from five-year average earnings to three-year average earnings. Mm -hmm. And um, that gets multiplied by their years of service and the benefit multiplier when they retire. And what it means is that they're using the last three years of their career earnings, which is just a slightly higher amount than the five years, because you just expect the later years to be um, slightly higher. No, that was negotiated in the contract, yes. that change. Yeah, yes. so that so was five, negotiated three. and uh, okay. then the contract was approved by the board of select. Okay. So, and it's just based on how hard it is to hire a police right now. Mm -hmm. What a three year would be more advantageous to the, to the policeman than a five year. Correct. Yeah. Obviously, the town didn't push for that, the police did. Mm -hmm. um, but they pushed for a lot more than that. That was what it was agreed upon. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, to the right of that chart is the same number broken up by the different member groups that I talked about on the demographic page a few pages back. Uh, so you can see that both the current employees and the retirees' liabilities increasing. Um, the terminated members is basically zero because it's just those two people do refunds of their contributions. Uh, on the bottom left, you have the unfunded accrued liability, which is just the accrued liability above minus the plan's assets, and that's what's left over. Uh, the way you can look at that number is it's the amount that you need to contribute today to get up to a 100% funded status. Because um, right now, to the right, you can see the plan's currently just under 80% funded. And um, since that's not a reasonable contribution to make, what we do is we amortize that amount over a given period of time to make it um, something easier to budget for. So on the next page, the top By part. the way, how does this uh, stack up to both 80% with other towns that you get it, uh, It's You're in really good shape. 80% is a good amount, and it's been increasing the way we expect it to. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're in very good shape. Yeah, right so now. we're on target. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, and we'll talk about the town plan next, too. And the town plan is actually doing even better than the police plan. Okay, good. That. Yeah. So uh, the next page has the actually determined contribution. The top chart just shows the total amount over time. And so you can see it's increasing slightly each year, which is partly with new employees coming in and partly by design, the way we've um, scheduled the amortization of that um, unfunded liability. It's expected to increase 3% each year. Uh, but you can see, again, it jumped this year a little bit more than the la uh, last few years. And that's because of that plan change that I talked about in the three-year average earnings. Uh, below that, same numbers, but broken up into the component parts of the contribution. Uh, the first component is the normal cost, and that is simply the value of the benefits that are being earned this year by current employees. Uh, they're going to accrue an extra year of service, which will increase their pension benefits when they retire. So that's what the normal cost represents. Now, are they putting away more money of, as a percentage? No, the percentage has stayed at 7.5%. And the town is fixed too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the past service cost is the amortization payment for the unfunded liability. So that is um, what I was talking about on the prior page. And the last component is interest on those other two parts because we calculate this as of the 2023 valuation date. 
and it's for the 2024-25 fiscal year. So we add interest to bring it to the 24-25 year. And now the last page just summarizes uh, all the parts that go into the contribution calculation. On the left, you have last year's valuation results for comparison. And to the right of that, you have the 2023 results before we make any changes. This was pretty in line with what we expect to see based on our 2022 valuation um, projected value. But uh, the normal cost increased a little bit more than expected, mostly because the expenses went up. Uh, and we just base our expenses off of actual plan expenses from the last year with a little bit of inflation. And so the actual expenses were higher. And so now our, our presumed expenses going forward are a little bit higher. So that could come down again in future years if expenses go back to where they were before. Um, the next column over uh, reflects the plan change that I was talking about. And so you can see both the past service costs on the top and the normal cost below it increase because you now have that higher multiplier. And that brings the contribution up to 1.24 million. And then the final column is an option that, um, that I wanted to talk about. So let me take that for a second, Scott. So sure. I asked Scott to run. So Scott, Mike, and I met last week. Um, I asked Scott to add this column at the end because we are budget number for police pension for 2024 is 1,069,215. So the number of the 80 the accurate determined contribution all the way to the left. Mm -hmm. If we just go with and take, we go from a 12 year amortization down to 11, like we've been doing are with the pension change in the contract. Mm -hmm. um, well, even without, if we hadn't, if the police contract hadn't changed the pension, we would have still been going up $100,000. With it, we go up $170,000, 160000 whatever that number is. Mm -hmm. So I asked Scott to run a scenario where we reset our amortization period to 15 years. And my understanding is when we got to 10 years, we would have just kept it at 10 and rebalanced it every year because it's an active plan you want your amortization to be out 10 years no matter what. So but because we had this change in the pension for this year, I wanted for myself and then for the board to look at, all right, maybe it's time we reset back to 15. I don't want to reset back to 20. I don't want to reset. I think 30 is what you could do, but that would so, be- Yes, yeah, I'm sorry, 20, some sorry, 30. Um, so this just looked at, um, what does that do? budget wise, right? Like what's it going to do to the taxpayers? Mm -hmm. um, the 170 numbers or yeah, like 165 seemed like a lot in one year job. So that's why I proposed the 15. And um, honestly, it's not my decision. It's the board's decision. But I think the board needed to see what it would do to the taxpayers, you know, Pension wise, obviously moving to the 11 and doing the 1.236 would be best, but our funded ratio is 78.8. Um, we have a good funded ratio. Um, resetting back to 15 on an active plan, to me, seems like it might be time. Mm -hmm. um, but again, my job is to present to the board what my recommendation is, but then it's up to the board what the board wants to do. The flip side is we can ask Scott, not for today, he's, he's not gonna do it right now, but we can look at 13 and try to meet somewhere in the middle. But to me, I'm like, if we do it, we're still, our pension contribution still goes up $40,000. Right. We're still doing our part in that way. The taxpayers are still paying their part. They're just not taking the burden of this change all in one year. Mm -hmm. So that said, I'll leave it up for discussion to the board. And uh, from what I can see, it's still reasonable if you're going from 12 to 15 or 11 to 15. I mean, yeah, you could do 13 and split it. Yeah. But, but we're still well-funded. Yeah. And going to 15 doesn't hurt the thing, and you, we're still taking a modest increase. Yeah. Right. And just to add to that, um, it'll just be, it would take a few more years to get to fully funded status 
but it's um, a reasonable amortization period based on the fact that the plant's still open and will continue to exist for a long, long time. Right. Yeah. But even if we had, if we didn't do this, the next year we dropped down to ten, and then the following year we'd stay at ten. Mm -hmm. Do you ever truly get to one hundred percent on an active plan? Uh, yeah. So what we usually do when we get to ten is a layered approach. So you take uh, the unfunded amount in that first ten year window, yep. amortize that over ten years. Then within the next year, when it would be nine, you um, you don't use the full unfunded amount. You just yep. use the difference between our expected amount. And um, and the actual number, yeah. and so it's much smaller base after that, yeah. and so it eventually gets to one hundred percent. But it's not like, yeah, okay. But it's not like if we didn't do this and just went to the ADC in ten years, we are at a. Well, you don't know what the growth is going to be, right? Because it's all based on six and a half, right? Um, yeah, there's various variables for sure. Yeah, but it it approximate ten years. Okay, it wouldn't be perfect, but yeah. somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. So. What are your thoughts? Well, I, you know, the 15, I I think it's reasonable because we're, if we're 50% covered, that would be one thing, but we're close to 80% covered. Yeah. So we've got some flexibility here. Yeah. We're not in trouble. Yeah. And because the town, when we get to the town side, it's a closed plan. Um, I didn't have Scott run that um, because with it being a closed plan, I don't think it really made sense. And no. the pension contribution actually goes down nine hundred dollars. Budget wise, it's still going to go up because the budget piece for this is not just pension people. Because now you have a closed plan, you have people on defined contribution. Right. So budget wise, we haven't run the numbers yet because it's a little early. The town side for pensions probably going to go up at least a hundred grand, based on the other factors. Maybe not a hundred, but at least fifty. So I think it's a way to kind of be right by the taxpayers, but also do what we're fiduciary, what we should be doing by the plan. Mm. You know, we could really knock the number down and go to 20, but that to me doesn't seem like the right thing to do. So I got to agree with Brad. I think it's a good idea to go up to uh, the 15 years, especially yeah. since it's an open plan. Uh, you know, we're going to eventually get back to the point where we're going to be you know, uh, covered with the, the payment. So, and like Ed said, we're not at 50%. Years ago, 15 years ago, we were down in the 50s with right. these plans. And now look where they are. I don't know where the town is, but here you got almost 80%. So I would, I would, uh, you know, definitely, um, you know, go along with that. Yeah, and I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think we're still being physically responsible here. Yeah. And until the budget's created, my guess is based on what I know about the upcoming budget. We're not going to have a ton of room just because the ADC says 1,109 doesn't mean that's what we have to budget. My guess is we're going to have to budget the 101, like as determined here. Um, but there are sometimes opportunities to put more money in. You know, we haven't had that opportunity in a while, but as Bob knows, there have been years that. The town has had the ability to put in more than what was required. Mm -hmm. so. so I don't know if you want to wait till after. Let's probably do the town. Yeah. And then we'll look at it as a whole. But I wanted to make sure we pointed that out in the police department. Yeah. Let's just go a little bit quicker because a lot of the um, asset information here is we saw the police plan. The main difference is that the town plan is closed, and so there's no new entrance at the point. And so on the demographic page, um, the main thing you'll notice in that first chart is that the number of active employees continues to decrease. You had 10 retirements this year, um, and you also had a number of deaths in the retired population. So the retired population didn't go up by 10, it only increased by three. And the uh, terminated members stay the same at 14. And down below, you'll see because it's a closed plan, there aren't many members with uh, less than 10 years of service. And everyone's kind of gravitating towards the bottom right of that chart. Mm -hmm. And if you look on the left of that, there's the average age and average service. Uh, it just shows that on average, an employee in the plan can retire based on the rule 75. So 
uh, you'll continue to see a number of retirements each year like you did this year, most likely. Uh, the next page, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on because the story is pretty much the same as the police plan. Um, just the numbers are different. Percentage-wise, you get a very similar return. And um, the pattern in the, in the chart below is basically the same. The interest rate page is exactly the same as the police plan. So again, that 6.6% for the expectation. And uh, in this town, or for the town plan, the valuation used 6.5% interest rate as well. So we're going to keep that where it is, just like we're doing for the police plan. Okay, the funded status, the accrued liability increased a little bit. Um, it was actually less than we expected it to increase by, and that was because of the number of deaths in the retired population. And you can see the unfunded liability is continuing to decrease and mm -hmm. the funded status is up at almost 88%. So it's a very good shape. Um, and unless anyone wants to go in more detail, I'm going to go to the next page. Okay. Um, so contributions, this year's contribution is almost exactly the same as last year's. Uh, if you look below, you can see that both the past service cost and normal costs stayed about where they were last year. And the only reason the normal cost didn't decrease more than it is there is because the expenses also went up for the employee plan. Um, and so that's something that could come back down in the next year or two, at which point you'll see a lower normal cost and this contribution will start to decrease. So on the last page, you can see that broken out by the numbers. Um, it's just there's no recommendations for changes here. There's no plan changes. So it's just last year's results and then this year's results. Um, you can well, see- There was a slight plan change. Um, it's really minor, just so the board knows. I think we talked about it at one of the prior meetings, but um, the contracts for the pension call for 35 years of contributions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's been a change. So contributions started in 2001. There was a contention among one union that all along it's supposed to be 35 years of service, not 35 years of contributions. Um, ultimately, it was negotiated that it went to 37 years of service or 35 years of contributions, whatever happens first. Um, it amounts to, uh, so that was one union and then the board of selectmen made it a, a, across the board, across all the unions, because they're the only other people that would fall in that bucket were non-union. So they would never change without them making that change. Um, it mounts to employees put in like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars less. That small group of people that have hit 35, 37 years, but not well, nobody's hit 35 years of contributions because you don't hit that till 2036 anyway, based on contributions starting in 2001. Um, so it was a small change. Um, but as you can see, it really didn't didn't really move the needle on any of this stuff. Right. And um, this applies to the police plan too. Uh, this is also where we usually recommend any other assumption changes that we want to make this year. And um, this year, we don't have any recommendations. The uh, mortality tables are up to date and we have no reason to change any of our other um, decrement assumptions. So we're going to keep it just where it is. And so that Contributions will be that 1.06 million. And the unfunded liability that we go forward should continue to reduce at a pretty good rate. That's right. And how far out does that go? Less than 10 years? Uh, it's at 11 years right now for the amortization period. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so we were talking about before how it gets to the later amount. So in roughly 10 years, you could see that go up to about 100. Okay. Assuming there's no other big changes. In that and it's a closed plan, so no one's going to be at it. Exactly, right. So in theory, it will continue to go down. Yeah. Just because they brought it up before. So of the... So for the 24 budget year, the budget line item for employee pension, so just the town side, mm -hmm. is $1.5 million. So that tells you, if you look at what the pension piece of the million sixty five, four hundred and thirty five thousand of it 
is town employees on defined contribution mm -hmm. and board of ed employees that are not in the teacher retirement. Right. So that piece grows every year. So even with this being flat, that'll still go up some. But last year it went up 16,000. So I don't know how much it's actually going to go up, but um, so, but that is a separate piece of it. So it's to the point that budget wise, the pension is only two thirds of the budget for employee pension benefits or mm -hmm. retirement benefits. It says employee pension, but it really at this point is employee retirement benefits because um, we're getting close to the point of being closer to 50 50 for town employees that are in the DC plan versus the defined benefit. Mm -hmm. And that will continue to go up because yeah. of people retiring and people going into the DC plan, yeah. you know, being being hired on. Correct. Um, because the town said plan's been locked since 2014. Yeah, at least it was hired after May. She was August. Yeah. I took a look at that after we met last week. Yeah. I think the last group was 2015. If there's one group that went to 2015. Uh, yeah, yeah so, I think Lucy would have been the last one. She's the last non-union. But I think one of the unions, or it might even be because the Board of Ed, the non-union Board of Ed are always on the town side too. So some of those employees were in the pension, but now they're on DC too. So each contract calls for different rates. And at one point, the non-union was moved to the DC too. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, but I think at this point, whether the board wants to go with um, the 1.2 or the the jumping back up to the 15 the amortization period, we probably should have a motion and a vote right. either way. I agree. Uh, Bob, what's your thoughts on it? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I know. I, I'm like great. I said before, especially since it's an open plan, I mean, we're going to have time. Hopefully, the market continues to do well. Um, and we'll catch up to that number. And four years is not going to make that great of a difference, I yeah. think. And where I'm looking at, we're already in a good funded position. Yeah, it's not 80%. as if we're you know underfunded like some talents uh, happen to be. Right. And we fund appropriately every year, and some talents <laughs> don't. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them actually skip. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now you, yeah, you're in really good shape that way. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm all for it. I, you want to make a motion or I'll make a motion to um accept the recommendation by Brad or Scott, you know, for uh, a 15 year amortization period as opposed to the, the current. Um was it eleven or twelve? Eleven. Oh, 11, 11. Yeah. So let's go with the 15. Okay. And I second the motion. And uh, so all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Approved. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I think, just think it makes sense. And yeah, yeah. I can finalize the valuation uh, uh, reports then with that. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on the schedule will be uh, performance review yeah. of the defined benefit plan. So, just for starters, kind of high level stuff. Um, you know, it's been a, been a strange year, <laughs> to say the least. Um, you, you, we're hearing the term soft landing uh, thrown out there quite a bit. Uh, and this morning we had uh, even more um, really good news on the inflation front. Mm -hmm. And that uh, you're, let, let me remind you, even though I'm sure everyone's aware, last year, 2022, you know, the Fed raises interest rates 500 basis points, five full percent. They do it in seven months. And you know, bonds don't like two things. Bonds don't like rate hikes and bonds don't like uh, inflation. Um, and we saw really the worst, well, we saw the worst year in the history of the bond market uh, in 2022. Um, you know, looking out to this year, uh, inflation was 11. Uh, now, you know, we have the CPI and the PPI come out in the last two days. It's in the high threes. <laughs> and, um, you know, everyone was very critical of Jerome Powell. And we saw what the 500 basis point rate hikes did to banks like SVB and First Republic. And everyone was kind of holding their breath to find out who's next. Um, 
But, you know, the, the, the term soft landing is thrown out there for, you know, the Federal Reserve lowering inflation without blowing up the economy, without, you know, massive layoffs in, in jobs. Um, and lo and behold, um, maybe he's done it. Um, so what's driven returns this year, and you'll see it, uh, is still the growth sector uh, of the economy. You're, you're the Magnificent Seven, right? So seven stocks have really been the catalyst for most of the S&P 500's return this year. Uh, and if you didn't have growth in the portfolio, you know, you're flat to, to down year to date. Um, so really the, 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 the return is driven clearly by the growth sector and the, and the Magnificent Seven. We're hoping it broadens out and it, it has actually in the last four or five days, if you've been following what's going on in the, in the daily return of the, uh, of the market is that, you know, uh, companies like, and you, you probably heard me say this before, if we're, if we're in a recession, do you eat more or less ketchup, you know, Heinz stock, you know, do you blow your nose more or less, you know, the, the, the paper companies out there. And we're starting to see, um, you know, small caps, mid caps, value stocks, finally jump on board with the growth sector. And, you know, from a PE perspective or from a valuation perspective, a peg perspective, you know, some of the some of the growth stocks look pretty expensive and the videos of the world, even though, you know, if their top line sales growth can grow like it has, you can argue that Divinity is a value stock. Oh, it hit five hundred dollars. I know. <laughs> um, so that broadening out. So there, there, there are a lot of re really good companies with, you know, little or no debt. They've had uh, dividend growth for twenty plus years. Uh, you know, they they've increased their dividend for whatever, and those value stocks and the, the small cap of the mid cap sector, which is grossly underowned is starting to perform. And if we could have, you know, if, if that trend can continue, and we, we think it, Morgan Stanley thinks it is going to continue. Our CIO, Mike Wilson, is, he's a pretty bearish guy. And, you know, he, he is, he has not given the, the signal that the bolt, the bear market is over. But I always fall back on Morgan Stanley's seven and, and 20 year views of the market. Right, not what's going to happen this quarter or this month, and so we're starting to see a broadening out in stocks. And uh, jumping to page four and five, page four is really, you know, just a generic thirty thousand square foot view of our asset allocation, which in Scott's report, that's that six point six percent expected rate of return. You know, cash, we're paying five percent on cash right now, and. If you think about the seven and the twenty-year expected rate of return, or is the is the seven or the twenty-year expected rate of return on cash five? Uh, no, and um, with all that's happened in, in the last thirty days, uh, we're expecting rate cuts in twenty twenty-four. And so, if we get one, two, three rate cuts in twenty twenty-four, you look at the coupon of the aggregate, which is around three percent. You know the potential for double-digit rate of return in bonds is mm. is staring us in the face. I mean, it, it's it's there's a real potential for ten percent rate of return on the ag in the next twelve months if we if inflation is indeed uh, you know down below four. You know, I say permanently. There's going to be all different random spikes, um, and that the rate cuts do come in into fruition. So. You know the temptation to you know to sell all your assets assets and grab the the five and a half percent CD which is out there. You know the Treasury market, which Treasuries uh, you know sixty days ago markets were having a conniption because the ten year was over five. Right. This morning the markets throw a party because the ten year is below four point five, which in you know the Fed controls short-term rates, long-term rates is dictated by the market. And, you know, we saw, if we looked at the, you watch CNBC in the morning, you see the the yield on the, the 2, the 10, 20, the 30. 
And if we went back in time, you know, two years, the the yield on the, the treasury two, 10, 20, it was under 30 basis points. And that if we saw it 60 days ago, it was over 5% across the board because of what happened in treasury prices. And, and we can get into the, listen, the reality of the 33 trillion in debt and the spending and how long can we get away with it? And the, Fed, the reality that our interest costs are soon going to be passed higher than our national defense. And, you know, the treasury, which is the safest, most liquid asset in the world, right? Why does, why does China own it? Why do, why do people own treasuries? They own it in, in Scott and my, it's known as a risk-free investment. Um, and the risk-free investment is now paying five. And so, um, I think investors and boards need to resist the urge to barrel all into short-term assets because when the rate cut uh, cycle comes, you, 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 you soon regret it. So we have a diversified portfolio um, using indexes and active managers. You can see the top holdings, but you know we do have a 15% slice in the large cap growth. That's driven our performance. We'll get into uh, you know sort of generic performance because we also had a strong performance by all, by the alternative investments and bonds have you know contributed as well um, but this is the the asset allocation that we use um, within our pension plans um, you know having growth value large mid and small uh, again some of our the assets that are in small mid cap are grossly under owned and uh, we expect good performance from that going forward. And Mike, before you go to the next, what do yep. you, what's the feeling out there right now? How the feds are going to drop the rate? You think they're going to eat? Yeah. It off so as of the morning, uh, as of this morning, consensus right is it went up. You know, there it was a seven percent consensus of a rate cut, and then the last week that's up to like sixty percent mm -hmm. chance. But you think they're going to come down like? 25 basis points a quarter. Are they going to like, so assuming that we the, don't hit a recession, the absolute gonna... convention. So, so this is a good, good topic because are our rates high now or are our rates average now? You may think average, average, right? Yeah. I had a call from a 34 year old client who was wanted to take advantage of these unbelievably high rates. And so I, I think that the higher for longer, right? And that you would get modest rate cuts is what the consensus is. But they're just going to ease off, yep. ease back into it, yep. unless the economy forces us to the gas. I, 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 and I think, okay. I, think the, what, I think the unusual thing was the, what's called 20, the 15 years of zero. That was not normal. This is kind of normal, right? This, if you look historically, in the seventies, you had you know twenty percent CDs and, and interest rates, but oh, in nineteen seventy nine, I had an eighteen percent CD. And yeah, and what was your mortgage, right? I mean, it was eighteen, nineteen percent, right? Yeah. So, so um, Brad, I think the answer is uh, higher for longer, and the days of zero, let's hope are over, um, and that. You know, I think those with assets like the pension plan, right? Here's what's going to happen in the next 10 years is we're actually going to get, going to get return for that piece of the pie. The 40% the, the that's in, fi in fixed income, we're going to get paid. So the next 10 years is going to be a good decade to have money. And it's not going to be necessarily a good decade to be borrowing money, right? Mortgage rates, car loans, et cetera. Um, so uh, consensus is Brad one to three cuts and uh, higher for longer and uh, probably maybe potentially even smaller than 25 years is great hikes. Sure. Uh, that change is so fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's where we stand uh, right well, now. Well, Mike, the other thing to consider, we talked about this uh, in the past a couple of years, uh, going out longer on the curve. Yep. Uh, when is the time to start looking at that? Yeah. I mean, it's possible that the 10 year could get back to 5%. Or could just stay in this range, but you do want to go out longer yeah. if you think 
we, we, we are we, we are slowly but surely adding to that portfolio to to the tune of about 700 grand right now okay. out of the, the total pie so i think that trickling in makes sense rather than some big dramatic right. let's take a vote and go all along and that as we extend the, the duration now you know the um it, it's a great time to win the lottery right now right because if you come into new money if you have a portfolio you you know what's happened in 2022 but if you scratch a ticket and win a million dollars right we start with cash five percent cds five and a half we just did a a municipal bond it's a california client so unlike connecticut california is a state where you can go all all communities in the state of california it's a bigger state it's more it's, you can be diversified within california so this california client um you know if you're familiar with municipal bonds or and if you're a california resident it's uh, free of federal and state taxes. Zero state taxes in California is one of the states that's higher than ours. Yeah, around twelve percent. So they have a uh, yield to maturity. So they have, you know, they own the duration. So they they have the maturity date nine point two percent for munis. I'm moving. Yeah, I mean, well, so so uh, yeah, I mean, so if you look at what what's happened with new money going into to Ed's point is as our treasuries roll off. And we go into longer duration, we're looking at the prices and we're saying, wow, we, we haven't seen these bond prices in in 20 years. Right. Uh, and so if we pre-COVID to buy a 5% coupon of a muni bond, they were trading at premiums of 120, 20% higher than what you get at maturity. The yield of maturity looked like everything else. Bob remembers, you know, the muni bands at what? 35, 13 basis points or 11, 11 basis yeah, points. Couldn't get us 10. Couldn't get, <laughs> yeah. right? So like, think about that, 11 basis points and people were eating it up. Uh, t this morning, the UK had a um, a pound, right? Not the treasury, their pound was 13 times oversubscribed. It was like a $70 billion. And they, it, it, was, it, it was enough interest times 13. So there's a huge appetite for you know high quality fixed income and now it now you actually are going to get return so so i think the the slowly but surely continuation of adding to that adding to the part way. of the portfolio is we yeah. should stay and on then that locking track. it in yep. and then of course getting appreciation as the, the that's the, why you get that's why that's where you get the double digit that's why lisa chalet our uh is mike wilson's right hand woman was talking about 10% on the ag in the right. next 12 in the next 12 months with a 3% coupon. So 7% is total return. Yeah. And that helps a lot with our 6.6 .6 average. See, right. that's where the bond market, unlike a year or two ago or last year, 22, where it crashed, it can go the other way in 24. Right. Well, and, 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 and the, the other thing with when you own held to maturity, like we do is that, when you have a maturity date coming, and let's say it's two years from now, it doesn't matter what the Fed does, what inflation does. It matters what the calendar does, because as you move closer to the maturity date, you're going to come to that par value. So you could be down, you know, the, 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 the Treasury could be trading at 93. Well, in 16 short months, you're going to get 100. Right. So it almost, you know, to bond investors, and I say this to a lot of people is like, you know, when that bond portfolio is ripping, don't feel rich. And when it's getting pounded, don't feel poor because you're going to hold it to maturity. And ultimately, you're going to get the yield to worst. Yeah. If you pay the premium. Well, as long as you're holding the actual paper. Right. That's the key. Right. So jumping and ahead to page. The actual so, paper. Right. And we're holding the paper. That's so right. Maturity date. Correct. Right. So jumping the, the, all the way to nine. Uh, the good news is in in the first well, I say good news is we're up five point three seven percent. I ran a custom period, which is the day on eleven six where I actually ran this, uh, and we're up a little bit higher than that six percent. So uh, as you know, we're on the June thirtieth end date, so that's where it always gets tricky, and that's why in the summer we always try to 
but uh, you know, it, it, you know, it, you know, with these two god awful wars going on and all this mad nasty stuff going on in the world, it, it, it's amazing that 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 you know, twenty twenty three looks like a uh, that type of year where you know hitting six and a half percent is right now not going to more than likely it's going to happen. On the back of page nine, page 10, it, this is an interesting, because uh, we got, if we were all equity, we're up 9.36% this year, uh, down 14. Remember in 2022, mm -hmm. SP was down 21%. Uh, if we were all equities, we'd be up 9.36. This is getting back to sort of Scott's, the expected rate of return type thing. Uh, bonds were up 2.26. Uh, last year, down three. Remember the ag was down 12. Right, which is sort of the benchmark. Um, and alternative investments have really performed well, uh, which is 10% of the asset allocation within the plans, uh, up 5.24. 5, 5 uh, you might remember that's the master limited partnerships, which is the energy infrastructure, a hard asset. You know, dividend yields on those things are 7, 8, 9, 10%. Um, and energy infrastructure is not. If we do shift to electric, MLPs are still going to be a great asset to own. It's not oil and gas, uh, uh, 100%, and uh, and hard assets like real estate. Um, you know, some of the other towns or large pension plans are dipping their toes into the private equity kind of stuff. But, you know, with the size of these plans, I, I, I think we stick to, you know, sort of plain vanilla um you know, investments um, that are liquid that we can sell when things go wrong. Um, but that's where we stand, uh, you know, as of this uh, past quarter. The police and the low sap are, are just like it. So we can, we can, as usual, we kind of skip that. But you're going to notice, you know, what, why the, they're not the, they're the same uh, asset allocations, but there's contributions in one, distributions in the others, right? So that's what's going to move the rate of return. If we lived in a, you know, in a granular where everything is exactly the same, you'd have the exact same return. Uh, but the, you'll, you'll you'll see that the police and the, and the list effort are a little bit different. That's the uh, performance report where we stand uh, heading into the uh, end of the year. Good. Good. Uh, any questions? Any any comments? Or... I'm good. No, no, I, I like the fact that we're easing into uh, moving out the uh, the leverage on the uh, fixed income on the treasury. I think that's going to set us well in the next two to three years yep. or five year period. Yeah. Because I agree. I think uh, interest rates are going to back off again. Sure. To some extent. How much? Who knows? We won't go back to zero where it was, but it might. Uh, they might take. Um, where it is now, five and a quarter, it might go down to three. Well, the token goes, doesn't go back to zero because that means it goes to zero. Down. That means there's a nuke in the air. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, exactly. But if it goes back to three, that would be supportable. Yeah. And given the amount of yeah. debt that we have, the 33 trillion, and it keeps going up, um, the biggest number on the budget is uh, supporting debt payments. It uh, it's eclipsed the um, uh, military budget now. And the only thing that's bigger bigger than that is our um, um, uh, what do you call it? benefits, you know, Social Security and all that. I I, I remember when rates were zero, it, it was a Fed funds went over two, where our country was going to go bankrupt. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and if you just look locally, where Bethel's positioned, we have great cash supplies, great fund balance. All of our debt is locked up. Um, before Bob stopped being comptroller, they locked up the school debt to do the schools, which was smart because we could have kept rolling them for a little bit, but we locked it up. But you locked um, it up at a low rate too. Yeah, exactly. I'd hate to be out there right now looking for twenty million dollars on a bond. Well, Brett, Brett, to your point, the uh, states and towns, unlike the country, are in great, are more or less in great shape. <laughs> No, so we're doing a really cheap one. Well, and it's, yeah, and it's the timing of the projects and, you know, our fund balance and all that. Not going to what has worked well. When we were borrowing money, about 20, we got 11 basis points. 
on one of them. Um, and then we locked it up before everything climbed. So yeah. and we got a top rating too. Yeah. Without. Yeah, the last one was right around three percent, I think, right? A little bit more. I think so. Yeah. I forget what the the net on it was. I think there's like fives in there, but they're a premium. Big premium. Yeah. yeah. But for the last one we did, we actually used the premium to buy down the principal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um so but yeah. So good news. And no, I think I think as a town we've done very well here. Yeah. Um moving off of Mike's report insurance wise, which I know we need to focus more on pension around here, but it is insurance and pension. Um health has been quiet with the state, which is good. Um the for our workers' comp liability auto and uh property. Um I think we talked about it last time, budget wise. Workers' comp has come down. LAP, I think, went up one and a half percent. Um, we did get a notification last week that uh, for the first time since we were eligible for it, PERMA is not doing a premium share, premium of revenue share. Um, and the explanation we got is they didn't necessarily lose money last year. They just didn't make as much as they thought they were going to mm -hmm. in the pool. And they had a really large claim of $20 million on one of their properties. Um, I won't mention the town, but I'm sure you could figure it out. There was a fire at a high school mm -hmm. that was insured by Kerma and it cost a lot of money. Um, so that's just the quick snapshot on where we are insurance yeah. was. And um, our um, ratio of accidents is low. I mean, we've got, we're, we're doing well there. Yeah, we've done a lot of work on trying to keep our comp right. claims down and, you know, um, some of the accidents happen, but we try to stop them from happening as yes. much as we can. But we have seminars and all that. We have training. Yeah, we do a lot of training. Yeah. Which is good. So, yeah. Okay. Um, moving on to the last thing that we've got here, consideration approval of the 24 uh, meeting schedule. Uh, if everyone looks at that, mm -hmm. uh, you can see our regular meeting schedule starts January on the 17th, and the next one is April 17th, July 17th, November 20th, and then the following January 15th. Um, do I have any discussion on that? Or uh, if not, uh, if it looks good, do I have a, uh, kind of to, uh, a motion to approve it? I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any negatives? Okay. Uh, meeting schedule approved as uh, as presented. Um, if there's no other business, I don't know if we can adjourn the meeting. Yeah. We'll have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Adjourn. Good job, guys. Thanks, Paul. Paul, thank you.